Wow, look at that 75 inch screen. The clarity on this is fantastic. Comparison with the Mogo Pro and the Nebula Capsule 2. Hello everyone, this is Nav and today I'm reviewing the latest model D9 portable smart projector by Aon. Aon? I hope that I'm pronouncing that right. Now this is an Android projector, so you have all the usual apps that are available on the, app, on the Play Store, etc. It's currently running Android 7.1, so it's not the latest, but hopefully the company will have some software updates soon, which unfortunately is one of the downfalls that I'll be talking about later. Even though this projector has some weaknesses, it still is one of, if not the best smart projector with native 1080p resolution that you can get right now. Stick around to find out why. So first up, let's see what you get inside this box. So we have the projector itself. We'll come back to that later. We have the remote. And inside this box, we have UK power cable, power brick, quick start guide, and a HDMI cable. So let's have a closer look at the projector. It's a good size, it's not too small and not very big either, it's just that perfect sweet spot. It's roughly as tall as an iPhone 7 Plus, so it's a compact size projector. It has some weight to it. It has a 3.5mm jack at the top for headphones or external speakers, two USB ports with one of them being the charging function, so you can use this as a power bank too, a HDMI port and a DC power port. So on top of the projector we've got the usual stuff like similar to the remote, the menu button, we've got toggle and middle button to select volume, back button and a Bluetooth button, which by the way, you can use this just as a Bluetooth speaker uh, and not use it as a projector. So you can use this as a Bluetooth speaker as well. So we've got a good function there. So let's have a look at the remote that it comes with. Standard Android type remote, we've got the power button, mute button, manual focus, we've got a mouse button and toggle, okay button in the middle, back, menu, home button, and the volume rocker. Pretty standard stuff. Looking at the specs, it's running Android 7.1. It has an eight core Cortex A53 processor, two gigabyte RAM, 16 gigabyte storage, native resolution of 1920 by 1080p full HD, 200 lumens, vertical and horizontal keystoning, built-in dual three watt speakers, which sound great by the way. Battery capacity is 4,000 4, milliamp hour, which unfortunately only lasts one and a half hours. However, this was not a deal breaker for me as I only watch it indoors with an available power outlet. Finally, the specs sheet states 40 to 300 screen size, but anything past 100 inch is not great as the image brightness starts getting very low. I'm comparing this with its main competitor, Xgmi Mogo Pro, which costs nearly double the price of this. I did purchase the Mogo Pro, but I returned it as I didn't think it was worth the money for what I was getting. More than that later. Here's a quick spec overview comparison with the Mogo Pro and the Nebula Capsule 2. So guys, let's turn it on and see what it looks like. It's currently running on battery, so let's see if it's got any power. See how long it takes to boot up as well. Okay, it roughly took about 20 seconds to boot up, so that's not bad. And uh, let's check the screen size. So just under seven foot gives you a 75 inch screen, so pretty decent. I have the lights, or one of the lights switched on, which is quite bright. And even though the light's on, it's still fairly usable. And bear in mind also, I'm projecting onto a gray wall so it's, it's like a, a darkish gray, so it's not very good for projectors. If I had a white wall, then that would be better. But even then, it's still very clear. The image from my, where I'm sat, roughly about six foot away, the image is very sharp. I can't see no pixels until I get to roughly, when I get to about maybe two, two to three foot, I can see the visible uh, pixels. So let's turn the lights off and see how he looks now wow wow look at that 75 inch screen absolutely amazing it looks very very crisp indeed you've got uh, the usual youtube google play you can download more apps uh, you can watch netflix see if netflix works i believe on the mogo pro you have to do a workaround 
Wow, Netflix works straight off the bat. You don't have to download anything else. You've got Apple AirPlay function, so you can use your iPhone to connect to the projector. And obviously for uh, Android, it's separate. We've got Plex Media Player for movies. Let's try a, a movie out. The clarity on this is fantastic. And the speakers sound very good as well. They don't, they don't sound tinny. They've got a slight bass to them, so. I fail to see how karate makes me a better healthcare companion. You want to keep me healthy, don't you? Huh? Punch this. Punch this. Punch this. Punch this. Punch this. Yes! Hammer fist! Side kick! Knife hand! Back kick! Gummy bears! Right, some things that I don't like about this projector is the keystoning, it's not perfect. So if I use only automatic keystoning, this is what happens. So I always really have to use manual keystoning and so I have to adjust it manually to get it right. So that's not ideal in most situations. However, once I set it up, I always have the projector in a certain location so it doesn't really bother me that much. But yeah, if uh, for someone who's constantly moving their projector, then you'd have to keep doing that often. Focus, it does very well. So if you need to manually focus, you've got the manual buttons as well. Keep the button pressed and then automatically focus it as well, which works most of the time, so as, as you can see. The other downside to it is that because this is not uh, Android TV, so that certain apps require uh, a keyboard so if for example you're using the app that's downloaded the YouTube app that's installed on this projector it's not very well it's not that good un unless you connect your phone to it and you your, use your phone as a keyboard and then you can scroll down properly because with the remote you can't really scroll as a mouse you can press the mouse cursor button and then go up and down however there's no scrolling function so even if you press up or down there's not much scrolling you can do, as you can see. So because this is like an, um, an Android application, not really made for Android TV. So that's the one, another downfall. And the next thing that I don't like about this projector is the battery life. The battery life, as I mentioned earlier, it's only a 4,000 milliamp hour battery and which gives, according to the specs, is one and a half hours. I've not tested it out because like I said, I only, always have it plugged in. Um, the battery life one and a half hours on the website state, states binge watching not really unless you're watching 10 minute videos uh, YouTube videos again and again then that's been binge watching but if you can watch any episodes or any series movies you barely get one movie out of that one and a half hours so that's very very poor hopefully version 2 would be better the uh, own manufacturer will add a bigger battery to this uh, this type of projector but one and a half hour is absolutely terrible for someone who will be using this outdoors or somewhere at a location where a power outlet outlet is not available then it could be a deal breaker for you so those are a couple of things that i don't like about this projector the software which is updatable because i've got one of the first units maybe then uh, there'll be an update in the future i can maybe up upgrade to android 9 which is android tv that would be ideal so the uh, focus might be improving and the applications will be specifically made for Android TV, so that would be beneficial. But in terms of the battery life, you can't change. Other than that, the picture clarity is amazing. The speakers sound very, very good. And another thing that I wanna mention is the fan itself in the projector is very quiet, so I'll let you listen to it. It's hardly, yeah, I'm sat literally a foot away and I can hardly hear the fan. So I'm not sure if you can pick this up yourself as well. Now just in case you've skipped to the end, here are the pros and cons of this projector and my final thoughts. Number one, the picture quality is excellent and crisp with it being true 1080p and the colour reproduction is great too. Number two, it's fairly bright for 200 lumens. Number three, the speakers sound great with an accurate amount of bass too. Number four, the cost is affordable compared to others with similar specs. Number five, it's portable with it being 161 millimeter tall which is around six inches number six it has horizontal keystone correction which is great if you have to put it at an angle number seven it plays netflix out of the box 
The things that I don't like are, number one, the battery life lasting only one and a half hours is terrible. You can barely watch one movie. But as I mentioned before, it doesn't affect me much as I always have it connected to a power outlet. Number two, the stock Android 7.1 installed isn't great as it's not Android TV, so some of the apps don't work correctly with the included remote. Number three, automatic keystone correction doesn't work accurately, so I always use manual correction. Maybe after a software update, at least a couple of the issues I have can be sorted. So let me know in the comments below what do you think I've missed out? Have I missed anything out? Uh, do you want to know anything specific about this projector? I think I mentioned most of the things, but otherwise everything else is perfect on this projector. I really, really enjoy watching movies on this and uh, it, I never get bored of this. It's just an amazing small little package, full HD 1080p native resolution and the clarity is just incredible for what you're getting. The only downside to it, in my opinion, is the battery that lets it down, but for me, it's, it's not bad. So guys, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and you found it useful, then smash that like button. And if you're interested to see more videos like this, then consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that bell icon to be one of the first to know when my videos are out. So until next time, take care.